Good morning. Francis and I are out here at the uh, Tulsa Port of Catuso on the hard stand. We're watching trains. Francis likes trains. He rode trains, freight trains for 20 something years. I've been learning a lot about riding freight trains. We could ride this one. We could ride this one. Talk about getting it thrown out of the port. That'd be a great way to do it. We are here on the hard stand. That's SB Seeker back behind us there. And uh, it's been a good week. No progress on insurance yet. All right, enough of that. No progress on insurance yet. Well, I think there's progress, but you know, the progress is you let other people that do that job do their job. And so uh, Brad's working on it. Haven't heard back from Amy yet. And we got another idea uh, from one of our engineering friends, Zach, and that's in progress too. So something will shake loose. I think the most important thing that we can learn here is patience. And from the comments that I've been getting, we are in short supply of patience in this world, all right? Things happen at the pace that they happen at. Your life happens at the pace it happens at. Life gets in the way, and if all we spend is our time getting frustrated and about that, you're not gonna get anything done because um, that's just the way it is. You got to be patient, you know, keep your effort applied and be patient. And we've got plenty of things to do here on the boat. Let me show you what's been going on. I just love having a crane on the boat. It is fantastic. You know, we can bring the dinghy up and down. We brought all the battens up. The sails are stacked up there on the forward deck. Uh, the hard things to get in and out of here are the uh, washing machine. So the washing machine's up here now and it's getting ready to get installed. And the uh, two drawer refrigerator that's going in lots of plumbing to do for that so uh, we got the pex box out and uh we're probably off to home depot again here the other nice thing about this delay is it's cooling down which is lovely like here's the other thing we did we brought all the battens for the sails up there's our morning train they work this train back and forth here all the time it is amazing to watch the industry out here so Again, many thanks to the Tulsa Port of Catoosa for hosting us here. And uh, let's see, okay, let me talk a little bit about uh, fear. You know, that's a common thing, but I gotta hit it because that's really what insurance is. You know, it's a bet against fear. And I keep thinking, man, our society is getting more and more fearful and insurance certainly is underscoring that. You can see, you know, there's just a lack of courage. All we need, just a little bit of courage. Because the fear mongers will say, oh, it's gonna break up and it's gonna sink. It's like, okay, come on. There's where it was supported on the road out here. There's the other support. It's not in any water. There's no water supporting this structure at all. It's all in air. It's bouncing down roads at 20 miles an hour. This thing is not gonna break apart because it didn't break apart. Face reality, it's a strong ass boat. It's steel. So it comes out, oh, it's gonna capsize. Okay, no, <laughs> this is not gonna capsize. Okay, yes, it's a lot of heavy steel up that way, right? And here, this is fuel tank, right? Nice and hollow. Here, that is lead. That is lead inside there too. There are 12 tons of lead at the lowest point on this boat. It is not going to capsize. There is no way. And she was designed for these masts to be installed and she goes into the water without them being on there. I mean, that's uh, 1,500 pounds of steel on the main mast there alone. And without those masts installed, she is even more stable in the water. So then it's, oh, she'll flood. And there are some places you could flood. You could flood through the uh, shaft log there for the propeller shaft, except it has a dripless seal on the other end of it that won't even allow it drop in. And there's other places like this hole. Okay, we know about this hole. This is the sea chest. Inside, there's a steel pipe welded in. And it's welded in. It's not a plastic fitting like you'd see on the plastic production boats around here. Welded in, it has two channels that come off of it. And those are welded in. And then there's a valve threaded onto that that's stainless steel and it's closed. Not a bit of plastic. You could hit it with a sledgehammer, it'd be fine. The two other places on the boat are these. These are the vent for rainwater coming down from up above. Anything that's pumped out of the boat from the forward cabin. There's another one like this in the aft cabin. There's a stainless steel pipe welded onto here. And there's a stainless steel two inch ball valve that's closed down just inside of this. So that ain't gonna take on any water. 
Then all you're left with is four soft points. They're soft points because that is plastic and it can break off. So you have a plug on the inside that you can shove down into it should that happen. And, you know, put a block over it, some cribbing, you can actually stop the water that way too. So if you're not prepared to do anything, yeah, this is a dangerous thing. If you've built the whole boat over the last 10 years and you know every little piece of it, this is just, it requires such a little bit of courage to do what we're asking to be done. And it's sad that our world has slipped to a point where that little bit of courage, hard to find. Check out the geese. Oh, into summer. Yep. What a nice yeah, sound. They're yeah, they're headed out to California. So let's turn our attention to all the interesting ways that we've had ideas for getting seeker in the water there's there's seeker back over there we're over by bird creek now and let me show you this this is bird creek and interesting that looks like a road over there but it's actually stone uh, it doesn't form a lot here in oklahoma but it's a uh, mudstone soft and you can see the water comes through here deep sometimes but uh this is august and henry the turtle down there he just uh knows that this is a safe place to be because it's only about a foot and a half deep there so there is no launching seeker down this slope from up there into a foot and a half of water now there's another creek over at rogers point which isn't very far from here and it's the same thing it actually has a boat ramp even two lanes uh even the boaters don't use one of the lanes because it's so shallow at the bottom end of that boat ramp and the boat ramp's so broken up there's you know, we put the tender in over there and the tender was sucking up mud. So the seeker drafts about six and a half feet. The tender drafts about a foot and a half. It was a lovely little walk this morning. We're going out onto the point here. Ah, look here, it's Bill's cousin. Say good morning. Cousin? Yeah, Bill's cousin. Oh, there. yeah. Oh, oh geez. Geez. wilder. Uh, yeah. Well, here we are. Francis being a kid. That's looking back into the port. Uh, see where that tugboat is? That's the low water dock. That's where the party was. And if you see that blue structure right there in the center, zoom in on that thing, that is the crane that uh, will drop us into the water. It's Watco Industries oh. operates that. And so all of this little stretch of river here is the uh, Tulsa Port of Catoosa. That point right there is where the vertigris comes in. This is the confluence. See that buoy sitting out there? That buoy is the end of the port's uh, domain. So once we're past that buoy, we are out of the Tulsa Port of Catoosa. And a lot of these ideas have said, well, just drag it in down the shoreline here and you know do some earthwork. That is a hell of a, of a of embankment we came down. And uh, this is all Corps of Engineer land, and they actually own back away from the river because when they dredge this, they put their tailings back up over on the shore. In fact, that shore right there is, I think, uh, number eight or nine on their charts. That's where they dump their tailings. And uh, so they own all that land as well. So you don't mess with Corps of Engineer land. It's public property. Oh, no bulldozers or anything like that or digging your earth ramps or anything like this. They actually have a lot of this river down this way uh, and they actually put a uh, rock along the shore so they'd be really unhappy about that too that first bridge down there you go underneath that and, and uh, rogers point is just around the corner from that that second bridge down there that is port 33 and they have a ramp on the other side of the river but it has a little skinny road seekers wheels wouldn't even fit down that little road and we'd have to prune a lot of trees down there has been a lot of ideas about how to put Seeker into the water, and I appreciate that because it's people using your heads, and uh, it is fantastic, the creativity. The, my favorite, though, has got to be the, the balloons, okay? A lot of balloons. No, it's, uh, yeah, it's about 100 feet. Yeah, that's what I estimated yeah. on the uh, yeah. satellite. Right, that crane down there is about 100 feet wide, and he's actually unloading coils of steel from the barge beneath him. That wall is about 45, 48 feet up. So that gives you some scale. The mast on Seeker will go up to 52 feet. So the idea is we'd launch the boat there and then we'll use that crane or Paul's crane over here at the low water dock and step our mast there. 
but it is kind of neat seeing steel coming out of that barge this morning because that's where Seeker came up out of a barge. It's a coil of steel 10 years ago. Oh, how cool. Look at this. Look at this. That's ah, neat. Yeah. I just think it's still... That is... Hey, I wonder how deep that God, is. God, it looks like the Suez Canal. Yeah, a mini, a mini version of it. I wonder how deep it is here, too. Because it's nothing but inches that way. Think so? Yeah, I know so, because I threw a stick in. But this, this could be a little deeper. Because it's nice and channeled. So when we get a rain, it would definitely wash through here. That's getting secret down. It's pretty slack water, isn't it? Not yeah. The problem is where you can get the boat down to it is yeah. there's no way to get cranes in here. Shit. But it is cool anyway. Yeah. Look at this. Check this out. This was actually man-made. Those are drill bore holes along the wall there. They're evenly spaced and nice and vertical. Yeah. So somebody wanted this widened out. Maybe it's just for drainage. Because you see, look, see this this hump, and then at at, at low water, it's probably yeah. It's weird. It goes isolated it down that thing. direction and rises out this way. Now I know it's silted in down at that end because I passed by there and you can see the mud. But maybe they used it for a. It'd make a great place to put stuff on and off of a boat. If you could get a wheeled vehicle down in here, that's the problem. There's no road. <laughs>